We're recording. It's the last Monday in April, everybody. Spring's on its way. It was so beautiful in the drive this morning. All the budding trees. Oh my goodness. We had this big snow last week and I was afraid it was really going to damage the tulip trees, but they seem to survive it. My dogwood tree is in full bloom. I am so excited about that. And uh, so it's the last Monday of April and we are back at the sewing machine and we're getting ready to do blocks. Which blocks are we going to do? We're going to do 11 and 12. Blocks 11 and 12. Let me just have a peek and see what the names of the blocks are. Block 11 is the double four patch and block 12 is the ribbon star. And here they are. Here's Cappy's. There's her ribbon star. Was this the double four patch? Ribbon star, this one's mine. Hold on, you gotta go a little slower. Okay, this one's Cappy's, Cappy's. Look at those two cons. Yeah, aren't they fun? This is Dawn's uh, Kim Deal. Double four patch. Kim Deal. This is Peter's Hold Cheddar on. and Cole. Oh, sorry. This is my uh, rib whatever. So they can see the colors. Okay. I'm just, I'm giving everybody time to see the colors. Okay. Excellent. I think that's the most exciting part. Mm. What do we have up there? Good contrast. Everybody did good with their contrast. Cappy's fussy cutting is immaculate. We love her fussy cutting. We think it's so much fun. I'm gonna now, turn that around. Oh, you are? How come? Yeah, because all my little flowers go up. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Is fussy cutting his background. Okay, and then, <laughs> guess what I've been doing? What? I've been doing me some potato chip blocks. Do you know I, think I, I have I haven't, 64. I haven't started those yet. I'm behind. 64 from the from January 1st. I'm, I'm behind. Look at that. Aren't they delicious? I'm loving them. I ran out of backgrounds, so I'm going to I uh, stole my backgrounds out of my Peter's memory blocks because I'm using the memory block uh, the memory fabric as the background, so I don't really need. I know isn't that pretty? That's, adorable. That's awesome. I love that. That's pretty. So I've made, I made like, I don't know, 11 this last two weeks. I think I'd already showed you that one. So anyway, there they are. Potato chip quilt blocks. Potato chip star blocks. So I'm excited about that. Uh, Peter's been making nine patches. Look at this. He's got him a little dime bag here. Ten, ten nine patches in a bag. He's so excited. Now, he had to actually, and I mean actually, dig in his trash to get this. He's making this English paper piecing, and there is a, quite a bit of waste within English paper piecing, especially if you're going to fussy cut. Right, Peter? Yeah, uh, anytime, a lot of waste. Anytime you fussy cut, there's a lot of waste. So Peter had him some one-inch downtime, and he made him some nine patches out of trash. So right here is going to be his little trash quilt. Isn't that going to be fun? I'm going to love that. Today... Does that make me a trashy quilter? Oh, that makes you a, a wonderful uh, <laughs> preserver of fabric, is in my opinion. In my opinion, that's what it makes you. Okay. Let's go to the sew machine, since that's what we're here for today, and talk about our blocks. I kind of did some free sewing today. Uh, pre-cutting out because you know we've been cutting strips you know how to cut strips right mm -hmm. then sub cut yeah, yeah. Fun. right good stuff so, let's talk about block number one I mean number 11 the double four patch let me bring mine over the double four patch that's this one right here it cal it calls to cut these squares out and put the squares together but if you cut a strip the width it says and don't sub cut back and sew the strip together, this strip is 10 and a half inches. I'm allowed to say that because I'm not going to tell you the width. That comes from the book. But I'm going to tell you the length is 10 and a half inches and I just sewed it together. Okay? And now what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to press it open. And instead of sewing each block together, I now can go back and subcut what the book says to cut the squares. See that? Now, if you want to, you can double this, but boy, do you take the risk of it not lining up. You know what I mean? So are you going to take that risk? Uh, I think I will. Master Dawn, showing us how it's done. Just being gutsy is all she is, showing off, brave. being gutsy, You're being brave. Being brave. Okay, I'm going to put one of my lines on my seam, one line up there, one line down there, make sure it's all okay. I'm going to get my rotary cutter here. I see, I subcut, I mean, I cut that a little deep so that I could have that little thing to square it up. Before clean I the yeah clean it up clean mm. her up okay I kind of overcounted I mean I made this bigger than really what it needed to be I think because I only need two bonus. of these bonus bonus is that a one and a half I'm not supposed to say that it's one nope is it, it one is inch? it is it's oh that's it's going another. I know where that's going yeah okay so there you go so now. Lickety split. Oh, that green is gorgeous. Isn't that fun? And so now I have my um, my four patches for my double four patch. And that was a much faster way to do it. Yeah, it is. Okay. So, strip piecing. And then, to help me do these... This takes 12 half square triangles, 12, okay? So, one way of doing them, you know, is to cut it. Now, it's a 7 8 inch increment. Go on up to the whole increment and then draw a line. You'll need six sets of these because each one of these makes two, right? And you can draw a line and you can sew a quarter of an inch on each side of the line. Let's just do that real quick. Quarter inch on that side. Turn it over. Are you getting it, Peter, here? Sorry. Oh, you want me to zoom in? Well, I was kind of had my arm in the way. Yeah, I can get closer. Get in on the action. I tend to uh, hit that cut too uh -huh. soon. Okay? Then it's what I do, quick on the draw. I'm quick on the draw. I'm Speedy Gonzalez. Oh, Cinco de Mayo's coming up. Is it? Yeah. I don't know what that is, but May okay. 5th. May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. Okay, well, what's what is It's the what best time it? to go to the Mexican restaurant and eat. Oh, really? How uh -huh. come? I believe it's the Independence Day that Mexico yeah. celebrates, I believe. I oh. could be wrong. Okay. But I feel like that's what I remember. Okay, now, you know, in order to square these up, I could open them up. Okay, I could open them up and press them open and trim all four sides. And what I'm going to trim them to is what it says in the book that they need to be. Okay? But, to save some time, I'm going to use my quarter square, quilt in a day, quarter square, uh, square up ruler. Triangle square up ruler. What was I saying? S triangle square up ruler. Dawn. Get mm -hmm. the lingo right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay? And I'm just going to do that. Now, look at all this, these steps that I'm going through. Okay? Is it worth it? It is worth it. Absolutely. It's worth it, but... You get the best blocks ever. You get the best true blocks ever. And all your points are going to match up because Dawn's going to show you how. But, because I had to but make what? 12, yeah. if I only had to make 4, 
I'd do it this way, definitely. Yeah, I'd do it that way for 12. You would? Yeah. Okay, but look at these papers. Oh, look at you. You got bags. Yeah. You got tricks in your bag. Yeah. These are called thangles. They're just like our cupcakes and our other stuff, yes. only instead of squares, they're strips. And you know how we've been cutting strips for this uh -huh. quilt, uh -huh. you know? And so it tells you to cut a 7 8 increment, go up to the full increment, lay this on it with both pieces of fabric. So in this instance, it would be the, the brown and the, uh, the Peter fabric. You'd lay both strips on there. You'd pin it at each end, you'd sew on the dotted lines, and then you'd cut off the excess and cut, 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 just like we do the papers for mm -hmm. the cupcakes and all that. Only this is strips. Fangles nice. are strips instead of squares. Nice. And uh, now, if one 12-inch block is all I had to make, I wouldn't come and buy a whole package of these. But let me tell you, these, I probably have... 10 packages of these at home. I use these a lot, especially if I'm doing a quilt that takes a lot of strips. And I love the one inch, it's my favorite because you know, that's what I do a lot of. So this is the one inch finished. You always buy your papers by the finished size. So that there means... was a shop sample that just went up <clears throat> over the weekend. Uh huh. And it had the teensy, beatsy, teeniest, tiniest half square triangles. Mm -hmm. Did you use thangles for that? It was like a little. Um, I did. Little, uh, it was like a large coaster or a small placemat. Yeah, I did use uh, half square triangles and I used half inch finished. Half inch finished. Half square triangles. Half square triangles. Thangles. Whoa. Yeah. That was tiny. Yeah, so they finished it a half an inch. Yikes. Yeah, it was fun to make. Okay, so... It looked amazing. Lickety split. I went ahead and did these. The magic of television, you know. I went ahead and did these. So that you wouldn't be here all day and all night watching me do this. Or waiting for it all week for last week's to upload. <laughs> right. Oh, I'm my still waiting. Goodness. I'm still waiting. So I've tried every <laughs> single day to upload last week's Meet Me at the Sewing Machine. And then we reset the internet. And then on, on Saturday, I did it before we left. And then we came back Monday, and I checked, and it was at 95% uploading. If that video doesn't upload today, I'm going to be mad. Ooh. So you need 12 half square triangles and four corner squares, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay them out just like, and just like it says in my picture here. And this block is just four of these blocks right here. Four blocks just like that. And they just turn, turn, turn. So you would lay out four at a time. So you've got... you got this kind of flying geese unit right here. Can you see it right there? Yeah, flying geese. See that? Geese. So C and B. B to the bottom. C to the center. Two, three. So it's really important that you take the time to lay it out, or you're gonna, you're not gonna do it right. And then these four go here. Okay. See, I'm laying it out just like this. I don't know if they can see that. That's in yeah, your they book. Can see that. That's in That's your in book. book. And then I'm gonna lay these four right here like this. One, two, three, four. And that's going to be this block. And then for this one, it's going to be like this. Except for the green goes like to the top. The green is the thing that goes on an angle. So I'm going to turn this one to the green to the top. Does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. If you want it to be just like the book, it matters. If you don't care whether it's the green that goes through or the background that goes through, it doesn't really matter, okay? So, alrighty. Now we're all ready to sew. So I have gonna... good news to report. What is it? So I adopted your um, <laughs> quilting behavior where you have it laid out on the board uh -huh. and you just go and stack them across and work from uh -huh. right 
right to left, top to bottom. Yes. Can I just tell you? Oh, and also on my chain, remember how I used to just cut my whole chain off yes. and cut my pieces and mix them all up? And yes. Them back you don't do that anymore? I don't do that anymore. Wow. And you know how nice it is just to leave it, st to still leave that thread attached to the machine mm -hmm. and then just work your, work way, your back. way back? That. And put it back on the board the way yes, it came off? Yes. That is a game changer. I That was awesome, Dawn. I loved okay. it. I loved it. So, I have lowered my stitch length because I was doing you that. thangles. I had to Thank tell you. That. you. Yeah. I was uh, I lowered my stitch length because I was doing these thangles. Yeah. So now I'm gonna hit the clear button to take me back. These pieces are awfully little. I could lower it just a tad bit. I thought we were using lower stitch because the small. Quilt it's such a blocks. small piece. I can go down to like. I thought we were doing 1.7. 1.8 is yeah. what my machine goes to. At yeah. home, it's 1.9. 1.9. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and what I'm doing is I'm just picking them up until the whole stack of the first row is sewn together. <clears throat> See? Just pick it up. I don't know why I cut an extra block, but I did. Now, I was not real proud of how this block turned out. I was sewing it at 6 o'clock this morning, and I wasn't going to take it out at 6 o'clock this morning. But I'll just show it to you, okay? This, I'm not happy with that. Hold on. Okay? I have to zoom in so we can even find what you're talking about. Yeah. What, what, what's wrong with it? It just, you know, it's just not a good precise, like right there, that's kind of good. Okay. But these are kind of wonky. But you know what, when it's quilted, it ain't going to matter. Okay. So now I'm going back, now I'm on the second row. You pick those up just like they came off the board. If you want to pin for a little security down there where the seams come together, you can. I'm just going to hold it if you need to get your stiletto to help you. If you're afraid you get your fingers in there too, too close, by all means, use your stiletto. If you're using the thangles on size one inch finished, it only gives you an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Not on the other sizes. The other sizes give you a quarter inch seam allowance. But you're not sewing that. You're cutting that. Uh, let me get a thangle. So see what I mean? You're sewing there on the dotted line. Then you're cutting here. And that's only an eighth of an inch seam allowance. But you actually haven't sewn an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So it's not as hard as you might think. Well, it's not hard at all. Do you ever sew an eighth of an inch seam allowance, Peter? I, I haven't tried it yet. I have. <clears throat> I haven't tried it. You know, when, I, when you sew for so many years on little bitty things, which I just love to do, that's my passion, uh, you know, an eighth of an inch seam allowance is, you know, kind of standard in some situations. So now that whole block is sewn together. I mean, that whole uh, session, section, session. Oh, get my words. Words, Dawn, words. Okay, now I have this block to put together. So I'm going to pick this up, and I am going to pin this. I'm going to make sure, you know, that those are lined up so nice. I love me a good four patch. I love a nine patch. I love a four patch. You know what? Maybe I should start <laughs> telling all the things I don't love because that would be a, li a shorter <laughs> Short list. list. You don't like people borrowing your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean blocks. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I brought it up so you wouldn't have to. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> My Aunt Pam is in Sarah Vista, Arizona. She owns a restaurant there. And evidently, there's a fence around the restaurant. I mean, not all the way around, but I mean, it has a nice fence. It's a home-style restaurant, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. And home, home cooking kind of thing. And uh, she has, uh, they're very touristy. It's a touristy place. 
And she, uh, along with the quilt guild there, have devised this program where they are making their painting barn quilts. You know what barn quilts are? You know those wooden quilt blocks that yeah, you put on barns? Cool. Well, she's putting them on her fence. Oh. And so each block represents somebody in our family. Uh-huh. So she's asked me to put my favorite one and then my mom's favorite one. And she she's making a brochure of all the of all the blocks and what they mean to her. Wow. And so uh, I'm supposed to be writing up a little family history about my mom and her quilting and yeah. mine and my quilting. I was just so excited about that. That I mean, that just sounds like such a community effort yeah, thing, you know, and I think more businesses, I mean, other business in the, in the Sierra Vista area are doing it and the quilt guild kind of, you know, inspired it. So I think that, that is, is so cool. Yeah. I think that's really, really awesome. Now I'm wondering why I don't have a barn star on my fence at home. I have a barn quilt on my house. Wow. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. That'd be fun to go down the outside of the fence and paint a new star. Yeah. Wouldn't that be fun? Oh. You could paint a potato chip block. You could actually. You could paint a whole quilt on one fence. You could actually take these blocks, where these four-inch blocks, uh, and actually make them huge and paint them. And put them on the fence. Now I just ran a start, an ender, and a beginner there. Now I'm going to get my little cutter here. I've been seeing a lot of good posts in our um, Always and Stitches Insiders oh, page. Oh my goodness. Of all these beautiful blocks yes. that everybody's making. Yes, Adele from uh, Australia posted, she's got the quilt done. She started it before she knew we were going to do it. It's beautiful. Oh my goodness, even, it is beautiful. I even saw a piece of indigo and matter in there. Oh, it is beautiful. And she's going to hand quilt it, Peter, which my mom was a hand quilter. Oh. Uh. And, uh, you know, it is the perfect size for hand quilting. Yeah. I will give well, you that. Well, and I told her, I said, you know, next time you're by, just, you know, slip in and bring it in and let us see it. You know, she's from Australia. She says, well, it's a little far. I said, road trip. <laughs> Either I Peter and I could take a road trip. I haven't been to Australia yet. <laughs> I've never been to Australia. Road trip. I think I've got some miles built up. Oh, do you? Yeah, I think I do. Could you imagine the damage we could oh, my cause goodness. in Australia? Oh my goodness. I bet you the fabric shops. Are I wonder really cool. if Adele would let us come and stay at her house. You think? Uh, who knows? Adele, let us know. <laughs> How many can go on that trip? <laughs> Kathy wants to go too. Go? Yeah, now, Adele, are you a good cook? <laughs> hey, that's okay. I'm a good cook. Oh, you're a good cook. I'm a good cook. So you could do the cooking. I could do the cooking. If Adele would let us stay at her yeah, house. I could do the cooking. Okay. I do the laundry. I'm an expert at laundry. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. So, yeah, we'd pitch in and help. We would. It'd be fun. Do you have a lot of nice quilt shops in uh, Australia, Adele? Let us know. Let us know. So I was thinking about the potato chip block. And um, as a beginner and an ender. And, you know, I don't know how many people really understand the beginner and ender thing. Well, I've been recording this video for I can't tell you how long. Uh huh. Uh, what have I been recording videos for a year, two yeah. years with you? Yeah. And I just now got it. You're just now into it. I'm just now getting it. Uh huh. And where has it been all my life? Right. Right. Why am I just now finding out about this? Well, let me tell you, beginners and enders don't happen every time you put a block in or every mm -hmm. time you sew a seam right. on your project. You sew the group. Until you can't sew anymore and you have to stop and press. Well, to get everything out of the machine that you need to press for the project you're actually making, you don't want to just leave your thread dangling. Okay? Because that's a waste of thread, first of all. And second of all, if you are starting on a point, your needle could drag your point down into your faceplate and it causes a really bad point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a nasty thing. It makes your teeth hurt when it happens. So what the beginner and ender, if you're sewing on a piece of fabric, and in this instance, it's not just fabric, it's two pieces of another block altogether that you're sewing on, it makes the threads more stable so that they don't have the tendency to go down into the faceplate. They give you, it gives you a... Uh, 
um, thread on another piece of fabric that will stabilize the thread and keep it from going in. So that's what a beginner and ender is. But it only happens when you get the group of things already sewn. So I was trying to count how many times you have to put a beginner and ender in just to complete a potato chip block. It's like 48 times or something like that. It's 48 groups of things. And I completed in the last two weeks, nine of them, I think. That's a lot of sewing. That's a lot of sewing. Woo! I'm pretty proud of myself. Okay, so look at how pretty that is with doing that uh, stripping instead of cutting the blocks. Instead of cutting blocks and sewing them together, you know, like this. You know how we took the strip and we sewed it together and they went together a lot faster, don't you think? Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to lay them back on my board just like they're supposed to be. There's those. And then I'm going to do these the same way. Now they came off the board. They came out of the machine just like they went in. So there's those. Those are on the bottom. So there's four of those and four on the top. And they make kind of a little tulip, don't they, Peter? Yeah, they do. Yeah, it's kind of a little tulip. So now I'm going to just flip one of those over on top of the other one. And it's hard to see that seam right there. Yeah, it is. Because it's a dark fabric. But I'm going to make sure I can see it. Mm -hmm. But uh, it would be hard to see on the, on the uh, camera. Now... I was right, driving to work this morning, and in the, there's a terrible, I mean, a terrible goings-on in the neighborhood to this morning. Terrible. Um, one female Canada goose had just had enough. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's spring. <laughs> and I don't know what happened to her original partner. He must have been on vacation <laughs> because she had like five male ducks. <laughs> she was waddling as fast as she could to get away from those five ducks that were after her. And it was hilarious, but I felt so sorry. <laughs> she just looked so worn out. <laughs> it was a huge scandal in the neighborhood, you know, five men chasing after one lady duck. <laughs> And she was just waddling as fast as she could to get away from <laughs> You are not going to get away from me, my pretty. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It was hilarious. Now, have you always called uh, Canada geese Canadian geese, or do you call them Canada geese? Canadian. Okay. They are not Canadian geese. They're not Canadian. I have friends who are Canadians. People who live in Canada or are from Canada are Canadians. So are they Canada people? They're, they, they're people that live in Canada. But they're not Canada people. But they're Canadians. Okay. You know, like we're Hoosiers. Okay. They're Canadians. So do we have Hoosier geese? <laughs> we could have Hoosier geese. We have Indiana geese. See what the whole difference is? Yeah. We have Indiana geese. But they informed me early on that they are not Canadian geese. They are not geese that live in Canada. <laughs> They're Canada geese. Wait, they don't have Canadian geese because it's too cold there? They don't go there? I don't know. I don't know. They're just not called Canadian geese. Can I get a fact check on that, They're Nancy? Not, they're not residents of Canada, only Canada. They're just Canadian. Canadian geese. Now, you're not going to call my friends a liar, are you? No, but different... Uh, depending upon your location and where you live, you know, you have different references. Like, for instance, the British, they call potato chips crisps. They don't call them potato chips. Right, right. We call them potato chips. And cookies are biscuits in Europe. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm just, you know, I'm curious. Yeah, yeah. Well, you find that out for us, okay, Peter? I'm working on it. Canada geese versus Canadian geese. Well, I know there's Can Canada dry. There's, there's Canada ale. Canada dry ale. Uh, Canada Dry, yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, people ask me if I can speak French, French fries, 
French toast, French dip, French onion dip. So yeah, I speak French. <laughs> but those, that poor little Canadian geese woman, she, she was just running for her, her sanity. I was feeling so sorry for her. Spring's gotta be tough on the old gal. <laughs> Next time I see her, she'll probably have 30 little ducklings following her. <laughs> oh, poor little thing. Did I tell you that my uh, my dogwood is in bloom? Yes, you did. Yeah. This is the one I planted in memory of my mama. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty special. That's special. Okay, now, I, I've, I've done all those, okay? Now I'm going to go back and do this one. We so working. Find, hold on, hold on. We got to answer. What did we find out? What did we find out? On. According to Google. According to Google. It's, and you know, if it's, it's on, on the internet, the internet it's so got to right. be right. They, it is perfectly acceptable to interchange the two phrases. Ooh, listen to that. So. So you can call them Canada or Canadian. Or Canadian, either one. Okay. So there you go. You're. Can I call them Canadian Canada Goose? Sure, you can call them whatever you want. That's however, right. however, from Audubon Society. Audubon Society, what does it say? Canada Goose. We're not to so my friends must, So my well, my friends must have been part of the Audubon Society. But but I, to me, well, they're I would Canadian think geese. I would sorry. think that they're the, they just are. They're the authority on things that are or or I can't say the word or or in, that one, that ornithologist. One. Yes. Ornithology. There Orn we go. Ornithological. Whatever. What the bird, the study of birds. <laughs> yeah, that thing. A person who studies birds. Anyway, the, so, the stuff you get into there, Don. It's well, interesting. I'm you, you it's come either here one. To learn Ed, educating your audience. You, yeah, you have to come here and learn things. So thanks, girls. See, we have a backup. Team. We have we have several fact checkers. We, we do. We do. <laughs> either way, you're correct. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Appreciate so, the info. So what do you want to call them? I call them Canada geese because just because I'm respecting my friends, and that's what they I asked like, me to call them. Canada I grew up. Geese. I grew up calling them Canadian. Yeah, I grew up calling them Canadian geese too until my friend corrected me. Now, what if I were talking about several different ones, and I wanted to be, get a chance to use both words? Could I say that? Oh, you know, I walked by, or when I drove by these Canadian geese, there was the lead Canada goose, you know, on the lookout for. I guess you can say that. <laughs> Geese is more than one. Goose is just one, right? Right. So what does it matter? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, the a whole the whole point of the story is spring is here. If you just didn't realize what we were talking about. <laughs> I know what you were talking about. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so Chloe. And Chloe just Adventures. So you, and and just so you know the sparrows are worse. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, Chloe uh, went to the park yesterday, and her mom and dad, I'm her aunt, if you guys don't realize that Chloe's not really even mine. Uh, I'm Chloe's aunt, but her mom and dad took her to the park yesterday, and th they were having their pictures taken, and Chloe had some black string all tied up around her ear. And so, of course, you know, immediately I'm on the, I'm on the Facebook saying, what's on her ear? What's wrong with her ear? What do you do with her ear? <laughs> I'm all over my brother. <laughs> what you do to her ear? Why is her ear tied up? It's a weed, Dawn. I said, get that weed off of her ear. <laughs> my brother says, oh, why? <laughs> I'm sure that's not what he said in real life. <laughs> Tied up in their ear, Peter. Nobody. Nobody. Nobody wants that. Ugh. But anyway, so he's been teaching her to dance. <laughs> so when she gets a snack, she you know dances. Tor yeah, dances. Oh, she's so cute. Uh -oh. oh, she's just adorable. And she gives the best hugs. So and she plays really good. You know, she's a, still kind of a puppy. Yeah. Well, so yesterday, Gizzy, my little old man, Gizzy. He uh, decides he wants to start playing like Chloe. Uh-oh. So he brings me a sock. And I said, well, what do you want me to do with that sock? And he just nudged it at me. And so he played with me. I mean, he has not played with me for a 
probably six years. He's I think he's eight. Seven or eight. Seven, eight, something like that. So anyway, I was just pleased as punch that they got bit by the Chloe bug. And now they are uh, uh, learning to play again. Because they were just grumpy old men before. No kisses, no nothing. Okay, now I'm going to put them together. So I've got these together. Okay. Now there's this. These little tulips. Those are just adorable, aren't they? Just adorable. And they just go together. And we're going to see that we can maybe make these a little bit more uh, accurate. Okay. Now make sure you get them put together correctly. The little half square triangle part goes to the middle. The full square goes to the corner. Okay? So, just a little FYI. Now, this is how I'm going to put them together. I want to be very particular. I'm going to put that right at the point, and I'm going to look on the other side. And that kind of went to the side of it, didn't it? I'll take that out. I'm going to really be persnickety on this. I had that happen to me. Yeah, you got to watch. See, now it's right in the side. point. It's right in the point now. <clears throat> And this goes there. Put that right. And make sure it comes out the other end. Okay. And I'm going to pin that together. Alrighty. I'm going to do the other one. And I'm going to be real persnickety. Make sure that comes out right at the point. Can I see that, Peter? And then goes right in at this point and then comes out at the point. Okay, that should be better <coughs> than I was doing at 6 o'clock this morning. See, Chloe comes at 5.30 because my brother has to go to work at 5.30 and his wife works. So Aunt Dawn gets to have Chloe every day. And she comes at 5.30. Well, today it was pouring down rain, of course. And she didn't want to go outside. Did she wear her raincoat? She did. But she didn't want to go outside and play. So we had to play for a little bit until 6 o'clock. And then, you know, of course, I'm wide awake. So I'm thinking to myself, hey, get some sewing done. And so I uh, sewed a little bit because I'd worn her out and she was taking a nap. And uh, she sleeps, uh, she tends to sleep when it's rainy. It is a good nap time when it's raining, but it's yeah, it really is. good to sew when it's raining. Yeah. I love to sew when it's raining. Now, not when it's thunder and lightning. I don't like to have my sewing machine Me on neither. when it's thunder and lightning. Me neither. Yeah, that's not good. That's no good. No. Okay, now that's my leader and ender from my nine patch that I'm doing. I got so many things going on. Okay, so... Here's my other block, and I don't have any points on it. It just has seams that have to go together. And it's really just this middle seam. But I'm going to pin this down because I don't want that flopping up when it goes across my um, foot. And I don't want this one flopping up when it goes across my feed dogs. So. Now. Take that pin out. Do not run over your pins. Oh, you know the girls from me and my sister, Barb? Uh-huh. She sews over her pins. I nearly had a conniption. She goes to the retreat with us. Uh -huh. She'll be at the retreat in August with us. Uh-huh. I was watching her. She sews right over those pins. I scream, Barb! Don't do it, Barb! Well, she's so slow, so really... She's never had a problem, but... Okay, check this out. You think that's acceptable? Yeah, I think it is. I can't see it. Oh, you can't? Well, let me flatten Press that Press it, scene. and then I'll take a look at Press it. Press it and see how it looks. Might have to rip it out. Probably not. I think I did it just the best way. you got to put your take your foot off my cord. <laughs> He's only allowing me so much cord. 
I've been doing that right there. I watched Yeah, you do turn that. it over and press it yeah, again. Yeah, I couldn't figure out yeah. why all my blocks were curving up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me see. Well, because you're supposed to do this. Yeah. Let me see. Let me see. That's pretty good. Don't oh, you that's think? good. Yeah. Pretty good. That's yeah. good. Okay. So let's do the same thing to this. Nice. Nice. Very nice. You know what I don't have yet? What? I gotta go get me some enamel. Oh yeah, some enamelware. Yeah. Gotta go. To, have you been to the antique store yet? Mm -mm. No. Sometimes you can find it at Goodwill, but not very often. Mm. Not very often can you find it at the Goodwill. My grandmother had enamelware. Oh yeah, where is it? Do you know? I maybe my other aunt has it. Okay. Now see that one's real good. Let me see. I find that one perfect. See oh, both points come yeah, right they're, together. They're smooching. That's very good. Oh, don't get back to the duck story again. Or you were talking about things that were French. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This is spring. It's spring, people. Spring is in the air. Spring is in the air. So the tulip trees. The weather's getting warmer. The red bud trees. We have a lot of red bud trees in this area. We have a lot of flowering crab apple trees. Oh, my crab apple tree at home is just raspberry. It just the color is raspberry. Oh, it's beautiful. And then um, the dogwoods, of course, are in bloom. I saw some lilac bushes on the way here this morning uh, that are getting ready to just bust open. Can't wait to smell those. You know what we don't have here that they have? Um, when we go to Paducah, Kentucky, for the quilt festival there this Lizards? time of year, they have wisteria oh, everywhere. Wisteria. We don't have a lot of wisteria here. Our climate must not be uh, good for wisteria. So, anyway, but they, they have the most beautiful, they have the Dogwood Festival there every year during the uh, Quilt Festival. So, it's around this time of year that they have that. And the wisterias are just blooming everywhere. Oh, they're so beautiful. <clears throat> How's your garden going? Good. Yeah? Yep, I have my lettuce still. Yeah? I have my rosemary, my thyme, my uh -huh. sage. Um, my rose bushes that I ordered three months ago should be coming in two weeks. Yeah, unless they're out on a boat and out in the ocean. No, they're made local. Uh, they're made local, dog. They're grown local, you mean? They're made local. They're made local. Yeah, they're made local. The Lord makes them here in Indiana. <laughs> okay, so... Um, and, the, and the Lord blessed them with the most beautiful fragrance. Oh, awesome. I love that when that happens. Mm -hmm. um, the hybrid tea roses. Ooh, Dawn. beautiful. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I I do have an empty vase at home. Just saying. Oh, you do. Just saying. Okay. I'll I could bring that, I'll I could keep bring that, that in, I could bring that into my desk. Because you know, I get to a point where I'm just cutting them every day. Oh, really? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, I put another beginner and ender in because it's time to take both of these out and re get the big reveal. This is the reward for all your hard work opening this seam, looking at the whole block. So exciting. This is called the double four patch. It's a doubly one. Double mint fabric. Oh, oh, double mint gum, I mean. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Good, That's gorgeous. Good uh, color choices, Dawn. Good, good color, color choices. choices. Dawn. Love that. Love that orange. I love that green with that orange. <sighs> okay, that is nice. Okay, awesome. now, but this one. What's this? Whew, Peter, this is the uh, ribbon star. Ribbon star. The ribbon I had star. fun making that ribbon yeah, star. Yeah, it was fun. That was fun. fun to make. It's fun. All your points should line up in the square. Right, right, right. All your seams. Now, you know what we could have? We could have made it a little bit different, and I'll talk to you that about that in a minute. Could have, should have. No, not should have, but could have. You still can. You still can if you guys want to. Yeah. You'll you, have just to make, you just make yeah. another block. You have to figure out the measurements for yourself. Sew it together differently. Look in your book. And, and what, your what book. I'm saying is... We could have made these flying geese units by making this whole piece, this flying geese right here, all one piece. And then the square uh, stitch and flip. We could have made four flying geese, and then we could have made this a square in a square. Oh, square in a square. See what I mean? Let me. See how this middle... Mm -hmm. Is just if we would have had a square and then we would have uh, stitched and flipped square, square. a square on each corner. 
So we could have made this block differently instead of making those 12 half square triangles. Let me flip that one over. So see how that's a square and a square? Mm -hmm. And then added to that square and a square are these. And that's really a potato chip block. If this were a solid piece of fabric, that's your potato chip block right there. Isn't that something? That's something. But by changing this to, uh, instead of one solid piece and changing it into a square and a square, it makes it look so totally different. Let's get out a potato chip block. Let's get one. Where do you think there are some? There's some in that Charles Chips that uh, Vicki gave me. Charles Chip tin. Peter is slowly handing it to me. But see. Oh, wow. See how this is just a plain block. Uh -huh. This is a square and a square, but it still has the half square triangles. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, not the half square, the flying geese. Flying geese, flying geese, flying geese, flying geese. So it's the same exact block only just changing out the middle. You know what else you could change out with it? Is a nine patch. Oh, or a four patch. I would love to see a nice little nine patch Yeah, on there. yeah. Or a four patch. You know, you could do a lot of things with the center and it'd change the whole flavor of the, uh, you know, you'd have your you'd have your sour cream and onion. You'd have your... I've been tempted with this. Uh -huh. I've been so tempted to do square and a square by putting on the outside uh -huh. to make this go on the inside. But then I realized how much I lose by doing that. He's talking about this. Yeah. Then yeah. I, I then I realized, oh, well, I'll lose a whole corner. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I don't want yeah. that. I don't yeah. want to do that. It won't be a nine patch yeah. anymore. But I would love to stick the center of that in one of those. Yeah, except for it's not the right size. Oh. This is... Is this two inch finished or two and a half inch right now? Um, I think it's, it's two, two right inch now. right now. It's yeah. Two inch right so now. it finishes an inch and a half. But what I'm saying is. is <clears throat> See, it's not any seam allowance, but look at how it would look. But what I'm saying is ah! design a block. Right. Design a block to go Right, with that. right. Yeah, make your flying geese two inch finished instead of two and a half inch finished. I mean, two and a half inch before you sew them in, make them two inch before you sew, before you finish them. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Mm. Oh, see, that's why quilting is so much fun. There's hardly any rules. Well, unless you're sewing with me. And you can just have fun by changing one little thing. I'll just set it back there. By changing one little thing, yes. you get a completely different look. That's just what I love about it. So, um, so today, let's go back. Let's put them on the wall. Let's get them all back up on the wall and and admire our beauty mus our beauty musnesses. Okay, here we go. We're gonna have to start another row, don't you think, Peter? Yeah, we're gonna have to start another row because this is just getting uh, too many. Well, how many have we done? We've done. Oh, this is the first one. We better put this one up here. Oh, the two cans were upside down. They were standing on their head. The two cans were standing on their head. That goes like that. Where's Peter's? Here's, no, that's Dawn's. Peter, where's yours? Oh, right here. Okay. Look at that. Oh, so delicious. So delicious. Okay. And then there's Peter's. He used a lot of black this week in his uh, mm -hmm. color placement. I've been wanting to incorporate some brown, and this was my big chance. Nice. To incorporate some brown into nice. mine. And then over here, I wanted to come back with some red. It's been a while since I've used, I've used purple there. Well, and I've used red up there, but I really haven't used a lot of red, so I wanted yeah, to incorporate that red's, some red. Yeah, that's a nice red, too. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, what do you think, everybody? It's pretty, isn't it? I can't stand back far enough. You can't? Uh-uh. Okay, well, we'll start another row. I just love them. Could you imagine if that was one big ding-dong-dang quilt? Oh, that's going to be so pretty when it's done. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so everybody, uh, thanks for meeting me at the sewing machine. Next time I see you, it'll be May. What? We'll get to, oh, we'll get to change the page on Chloe calendar. That'll be fun. 
okay? And I can't think of anything else to tell you. So have a good week. Talk to you later. Bye.